About a month ago, I spent $865 on a liquid damage MacBook Pro to see if I could fix it, but unfortunately it had a whole bunch of shorted capacitors underneath the GPU, or so I thought. Thank you to so much of you in the comments section. I learned very quickly that the capacitors under the GPU are actually very low impedance, so it will seem like they're shorted when they're actually not shorted. So I went back and retested this motherboard, and sure enough, none of them were actually shorted. They all tested normal. So then the question becomes, what's wrong with this motherboard, and can I still fix it? Those are the questions I'm gonna be answering today. Let's try and fix this thing. Also, if you haven't seen part one, I highly encourage you to go watch that because then this video will make a lot more sense. I'll put a link in the description so you can go watch that and you can come right back here and finish watching this one. Since I now know that all of those capacitors under the GPU are fine, I need to turn my attention to these chips right here. These are the CD3215s also known as MUX chips, according to Lewis Rossman. So when I first tested them, none of them were getting hot or anything to indicate any of them were faulty. So I reflowed them all, basically just took hot air until I could touch the corner and they would move just a tiny bit. That told me that all the solder balls were liquid underneath. And then I let them all cool down. And then I plugged the USB-C cable back in on each of the ports. And I did find one that was running very, very hot after that. I replaced that CD3215 that was getting very hot because I know from Lewis Rossman's videos that if that's getting hot, then it most likely needs to be replaced. I do also want to thank Lewis Rossman because he did come in the comment section and give me some hints as to what the problems might be, as did so many of you. So thank you guys all so much for your comments. Unfortunately, I didn't film replacing that CD3215 because I guess I'm just a bad YouTuber. This is the CD3215 that was getting super hot, so this is the one I replaced. Another reason that I knew one or more of these were likely faulty is they are all getting the voltage to turn on, the enable voltage, but they're just not telling the charger to charge the battery like normal. So with all that being said, let's test it and let's see if that did any good at all. I flipped the board around to get a little better camera angle. Now let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, we got 5.14, which is what we had before, 0.25 amps. Oh, there we go, 19.9 volts. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to jump up to 20 volts. Yes, this is great news. It's supposed to jump up to 20 volts, which it just did. Now I just gotta get this motherboard put back in Let's see if maybe it works. Okay, now I know this method is probably a little bit different than most other people that repair Macs, but let's try it. Whew, there we go. Now that it's all in, let's test it. Okay, so nothing so far. Okay, nothing, let's plug it in. Now let's try. Still no fan spin. So we have 19.8 volts, but 0 0.01 amps. So that means there's basically no current flowing. Let's see what this one does. Okay, so that one jumps up too. Unfortunately, it still won't turn on, no fan spin. So now we gotta do some more diagnosing. We definitely have one problem fixed because it is at 20 volts now when I plug it in, but since it's still not turning on, there's still more work to do. Wait, we've got some fan spin going on. Okay, this is great news. Maybe the battery was just not charging? Oh, no more fan spin. Okay, what's going on here? Okay, so it's 19.7 volts. It's charging at one, almost one and a half amps. So as far as I know, that's normal. I'm just gonna let it sit here for a good long while and let it fully charge up. And then we'll try and turn it on and see what it does. So it's been charging now for several hours. The charge meter shows that it's fully charged. Let's open it up and see if it starts up. What do you think? Is it gonna work? Here we go. Whoa, we have an Apple logo. <laughs> okay, here it goes. Wow. We have the fan spinning. Wow, unbelievable. This is totally working now. Does the, yep, trackpad works. Okay, let's check the keyboard. Okay, I don't see any problems with the keyboard. Did I just fix it? It looks great. Wow. So let's look about this Mac and find out a little bit more about it. 
macOS High Sierra, 2.2 giga gigahertz Intel Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM. We have a 250 gig flash storage. The power on self test was run and it did pass. The battery only has 159 cycle counts and the condition is normal. So I've definitely got some more testing to do on this. I wanna see if everything's working, if there's any other problems, but so far it looks like I fixed it. Now, before you go anywhere though, I know what you're thinking. Steve, now that you fixed this one, it was a risk, just move on. You know, keep, keep buying game consoles. But I might have actually bought another MacBook Pro that's broken. This one is in pretty rough condition, you can see. Right here, it's all dented up and it's been pounded back out. So I'm afraid maybe the motherboard is broken on this. I don't know what's wrong with it, but let's take it apart. Now this MacBook Pro, I paid around $700. I don't have the number right in front of me, but it was probably a little too much after taking a look at it. As you can see, this part is the part that I'm worried about. It's been bent out. I think what happened is I don't know, maybe got run over or something and smashed this all down and then somebody went and bent it all back out. So I'm afraid what we're gonna find under here, but I'm gonna plug it in and see if it charges first and then we'll go from there. And here we go. So it shows 5.14 volts. Let's see if it jumps up to 20 volts. And so far it definitely does not. One of the things I don't like about stuff like this is I know somebody's been in it, so they know the extent of the damage, and instead of fixing it, they decided to sell it. So most likely, it's gonna be a difficult repair. But let's check it out. And... Okay, not actually not as bad as I thought it would be. So it actually doesn't look that bad. Maybe something down in here. Let me, let me zoom in here. So there's a little discoloration there. But overall, this actually looks like a pretty clean machine. Let's take a look at the screen. And I don't see any problems with the screen. Definitely never know. This is also fairly worrisome right here. You can see it doesn't meet up. So I feel like this whole chassis may be like bent a little bit, but. So I guess what I need to do now is get this motherboard out and take a look at these CD3215s, get some testing on the numbers and see if we can figure out why it's not charging at 19 volts. So I need to test the enable on the CD3215 and see if we're getting that, and then we'll move on from there. I did just notice over here, there's a little bit of marking over here. It almost looks like maybe some liquid. Oh, and what do we got here? Here we go. Look at this, this is sticky. Okay, so we've got some sort of corrosion over here. So that's what I'm gonna be looking at first and it definitely could be worse once we get to the underside of the motherboard. The other nice thing about this though is it doesn't look like it's been taken apart. There's no evidence of anyone taking apart any of the connectors or even any of these guys. That all looks really good. So this MacBook Pro doesn't actually look as bad as I thought it would, which is extremely rare. Usually everything's worse than I think, but that's good news for us. The question is, I fixed the first one, at least so far. Do you think I can fix this one too? Before I do actually get to that though, I do wanna point out this case. There's all sorts of gunk on this lower case. So I'm not totally sure, but it definitely looks like that could be from liquid. Now, before we flip this over, just look at how disgusting this looks over here. Another worrisome thing, we definitely do have some liquid right there. Hopefully the, the keyboard is fine. Now let's flip this motherboard over and see how bad it is. Um, nothing major yet. Look at all this dust though. There's just dust and dirt everywhere. Okay, we do have liquid over here for sure. So right away for sure, we've got some sticky stuff here and along here. These guys look okay over here, but it definitely has some liquid there. This is worrisome for me. This is the display connector. And there's definitely a little bit of corrosion right there. Maybe some under here. I'll have to take that connector off and look under that better. Other than this extreme amount of dust over here, I don't really see any other problems. I don't know if how well it'll show up on camera, but you can see there's liquid there and it spilled all the way down here, all the way through here, and also all along here. And here we go. I hope this isn't too bad. 
Oh, this is really hard to get off. This is not good. Come on. It is just stuck on there. Okay, there we go. Okay, the good news is that I don't think the connector itself is bad. That actually looks fine in there. So I will need to take a look at all these components here, but the connector itself I think is probably okay. Now that is good news. So I think we've gotten a good idea of where the major damage is on this. It's time to take a look under the microscope and see what else we can figure out. And taking a look at these USB-C ports, you can see exactly what one of the problems is. This pin right here has been totally blown out of the actual port itself. So I don't know exactly what happened here. You can see all this debris right here. I'm guessing maybe some sort of liquid or something got in here and then caused a short circuit somewhere along here and just caused it to burn out. So this is pretty intense right here. So this obviously needs to be replaced, but what I'm more worried about is what effect did this have on the motherboard? And this clearly shows where a lot of the liquid damage is. We had liquid that went all the way up here. Looks like that was the extent of it over here. But then also the liquid came all the way down to the bottom of the board. And it went all the way along. It looks like about here was where it ended. But all this stuff right in here is pretty sticky. I don't see any major corrosion, but this obviously will all need to be cleaned. Here's the other side of the board. There's a little bit of liquid here. I may need to take off this heat sink and heat pipe here, but we've got some liquid there. Still no corrosion that I see. This part right here is not showing any liquid damage, just really, really dirty. I don't see any, you know, corrosion or anything like that. Just a lot of dirt and gunk got up in here. So this will all need to be cleaned as well. And then just one more little place of liquid damage here, a little bit here, and just a tiny bit of corrosion on this guy. And other than that, that is it for this side. So I'm hoping that we don't have actually any liquid damage, but I still have to figure out why the charger is only going to 5 volts and see if there's any other damage from that burned out USB-C port. Now it's time to do some diagnostics and see if we can figure that out. Now the first things we need to check are the CD3215s and see if they're getting enable voltage. We can check that enable voltage right on this component right here. So I'm going to plug it in and test and see if we get the 3.3 volts. Should have 3.3 volts right on this point. And we have zero volts. So we are not getting an enable signal to the CD3215s which means we need to trace that signal and see why we're not getting that. Next, I'm gonna be checking for a short to ground on PPBus G3 Hot. That should be around 13 volts, I think, maybe 16, I don't remember. But we don't have that either, so I'm gonna check for a short for ground. Definitely have a short there. We definitely have a short there. So we seem to have a short on one of the main power buses to the logic board. Next, I'm gonna check this ISL9240 and see if we have any shorts on that chip. So we've got 0.3 on one side of this and 2.2 on the other side, which would be a short to ground. So I'm finding several circuits around here that are definitely shorted to ground. So this is what I suspect since this is also the enable chip for the CD3215s. This is what I'm guessing is faulty. The problem with this is there's nowhere to buy this chip. For the simplicity's sake of this video, I did edit out a lot of the diagnostic time and just basically told you the important facts. It seems like the ISL 9249 on this motherboard is bad. That would also make sense with this USB-C port being faulty. It could have sent too much voltage to the ISL or some other problem, but that seems to be what the problem is. Now, unfortunately, as of right now, there's just nowhere to find that chip. I'll be keeping my eyes open on eBay. Maybe I can find it there. If you know of any source, please let me know. I know Lewis Rossman also does not stock these and doesn't know where to find them, but until I get one, I'm not gonna be able to fix this board. I do know that on Google, I've seen that the iPhone 10 charging case does have this chip on it, but I don't know if it works the same. I don't know if it's a special program or anything like that, and I don't plan to spend $150 just to find out. Or do I? Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a good one.